Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I shortened my title on my slide here, just so it's not as wordy as in the abstract there. Uh, I'm very happy to be here today to um, share some of my research that I've done um, with other people in my lab. And yep, today I'm going to talk about um, water stress on trees and is there any kind of soils in the Los Angeles region. Uh, I'm going to follow a basic outline um, just with an introduction to um, some of the issues that might be limiting growth in the oil sands region. Um, and then the materials and methods that I used, um, then go through the results and then uh, finish up with a few conclusions. Um, so first, uh, it's already been mentioned here today and you've all heard it before, but um, we have great energy demand in our society and this has led to developing the oil sands. And um, with, the, with the surface mining, this has created um, a lot of reclamation opportunities. And I call it an opportunity because with the Alberta Pro uh, Environmental Protection Act, um, it stated that we have to return this land to an equivalent land capability. And um, it's, it's broadly defined so that we can, it doesn't have to be exactly what it was before. And, you know, it, this, the question still out there if we can even return it to what it was before. But it's an opportunity in the sense that I think um, if we strive for like commercial timber or some sort of plantations, um, the opportunity is there to create a natural resource that we can, um, you know, it can, it can be there for a long time and it can provide jobs for people. And also just to note, it can, it can provide like a lot of habitat for all the critters that are out there as well. Um, but with, with this opportunity, obviously we have a lot of um, challenges that we have to meet in order to, to make these plantations. And um, some of these uh, challenges that we have are the soils that we reclaim typically have a low nutrient availability. Um, there can be soil salinity issues, uh, soil compaction, uh, low water availability, and once all the soil is on site, um, there can also be vegetative competition issues as well. And uh, more specifically, I want to talk about Suncor Lease um, 86 17. This is their main site um, north of Fort McMurray. And on that site, there's, there's lots of trees that have been um, planted on reclaimed sites there over the last 20 years to 25 years. And um, when you drive around that site, there is, you can see that there's um, some poor tree performance issues. So we see like foliar discoloration, so a yellowing of leaves, um, stunted growth, so there's, there's very low and little growth each year. And also um, some trees are stressed and they're dropping needles as well. So you only have needles for like the last couple years of um, growth and the tree sheds the rest of those needles. Um, and when we think about uh, what's causing the problems on this site. Um, it's, it's good to look at the soil, and that's why we're all here, um, to look at soil. So I'm going to talk about a, a common soil cover on uh, these sites, and it's a peat mineral mix over top of tailing sand. And the peat mineral mix, it typically has a high organic carbon <coughs> content and a fine texture, whereas underneath in the tailing sand, it has a, a low organic carbon content and a of coarse texture. And um, this has a big influence on water holding capacity, so the peat mineral mix um, holds a lot much, a whole lot more water than the tailing sand beneath it. And when we have this um, textural interface, it can be a capillary barrier because um, the peat mineral mix um, with the adhesive forces, it's holding water tighter, and this is preventing um, some drainage into the tailing sand. So it's really key to think about the peat mineral mix on these reclaimed sites because um, depending on its properties, it can, can provide a lot more water for the plants that are growing on that site. Um, so with uh, the peat mineral mix in mind, um, for my study, uh, we hypothesized that water stress can be limiting tree growth on some of these uh, reclaimed stands, and that the, the shallowness of the peat mineral mix and a low organic carbon content can decrease soil water holding capacity and thus increase uh, water stress in the reclaimed oil sands. Um, so the study site, like I mentioned before, it's at Suncor. 
Uh, we have our sites uh, located in the bottom right corner. So we have our um, sites located here. This is uh, Pond 1, it's known, at Suncor. And um, our sites are located around the dikes that are around the Pond 1. We also have two um, pine sites also along here, along a, that's known as Pond 2 slash 3. And one interesting thing to note is this is the first uh, reclaimed uh, tailing sand pond. And so um, the trees on the pond, they're about two to three years old, but the, the trees that I'm looking at, um, they're, they're older trees. They're anywhere from about 16 to 21 years old. Um, that's when they were planted in the early 90s. And um, I think that's what kind of makes um, this a bit unique in our study is we're looking at older trees that have been growing on the peat mineral mix for a while, whereas a lot of studies, um, they're, they're starting from scratch and that's really useful too, but this is what makes ours a bit different. Um, we have older trees on our sites. And yep, and just to mention, um, the lodgepole pine is the main species that's planted here. Um, so we set up 10 by 10 meter plots on each site. Uh, we established six plots in June 2011, and then we added three additional plots um, in the spring after. And, the, and how we chose our plots, um, we wanted each site to represent, or between sites we had a gradient of tree performance. So we chose some sites that had the, um, the poor tree performance, so we would see stunted growth and foliar discoloration and needle dropping. And we chose some sites that had um, relatively good tree performance, so it had um, good leader growth and they, they looked like nice green trees, I guess you could say. And um, so we wanted to see if there was differences in general between these sites. So the tree measurements that we did, uh, we measured tree height and diameter of breast height. And also we did five year increments, so this is when we we looked at the trees and we counted the last five whorls of tree growth. And we got we have really sore necks doing this because it took took about a week and there was about 400 trees to do. So that was the fun part of the study. And we also did um, pre-dawn shoot water potential. And this was done um, in the early mornings. Um, and it's, it's used as an indicator of water stress in trees. Um, for soil and site sampling, we, um, we measured at 20 centimeter intervals down to one meter, and we did um, five samples per site, and then we mixed the samples together to form a composite sample. Um, in the peat mineral mix, we installed um, moisture sensors, and this was at 10 centimeters below the soil surface, and then we um, installed a moisture sensor again at uh, 10 centimeters below the peat mineral mix and tailing sand the interface. So this was 10 centimeters below here and this one was 10 centimeters from the surface. And we also had soil temperature sensors installed at <coughs> the same depths. Um, and also on Pond 1 there was a weather station where I um, got air temperature and precipitation data as well. Um, for the analysis uh, with the height and diameter of rest height um, measurements, I used a tree biomass calculation, and um, this this gave me a better idea of tree growth. So it was just a way to combine the height and the diameter for the tree growth. Um, we also looked at bulk density and soil organic carbon. Um, I did a calibration with the moisture sensors so that they could give a volumetric water content for the peat mineral mix and a separate calibration for the tailing sand as well. Um, and then I also did a moisture retention curve and this was to get the, um, the matrix potential at each, um, so that, sorry, so the, the moisture retention curve was, to, was used to calculate the plant available water content. Um, so I used field capacity and multi point with that. And for statistical analysis, I used um, linear and nonlinear regression. So we'll get we'll get into the results now. Um, as you can see here, if you're putting the wrong button, um, this is your typical soil profile of uh, what we saw on our sites. So we have the peat mineral mix 
up above and the tailing sand below. And you can see most of the roots are in the peat mineral mix, and there are some fine roots that go into the tailing sand as well. Uh, we'll start with the, the weather data, um, because I have, I have data from 2011 and from 2012. And in 2011, we can see um, here on average, the, this is the light brown bar you can see here, um, we had less precipitation in the summer of 2011 compared to the normal. And the normal is the black bar, that's from uh, Environment Canada from 1971 to year 2000. So on average, we had a fairly dry year, or dry summer, in 2011, and 2012 was more on par with um, what you would expect. And also the temperatures in 2011 and 2012 uh, were on average higher, so this could also um, increase water stress in the sense of um, increasing eventful transpiration. Uh, just some more results here, so what I want to note just um, this mean soil water content was slightly lower in 2011 on average across all the sites. Uh, the pea mineral mix depth on my sites were about 20 centimeters. Um, they were all on uh, fairly steep slopes because they were on the dikes. Um, so the slope was about 28%. And the trees were um, planted between 1991 and 1996. <coughs> okay, so now we're going to look at the shoot water potential and the above ground biomass increment. So this is how much it grew between 2001 and 2012. And um, so the less uh, shoot water potential you have, the closer to zero, um, the less stress that the tree is experiencing. Um, so what we can see here as with the um, with greater, uh, sorry, with lower shoot water potential, we had lower biomass increment. So the trees that were more stressed grew less over the same period of time. Um, and now, um, still looking at shoot water potential, um, I, looked, I compared this with plant available water content in the soil. And we see the similar trend as well. So the, the more stress that the trees are under, that's the lower shoot water potential, we had um, less plant available water as well to those trees. So again, it's just, it's just reinforcing that um, the sites that have less plant available water, those trees were um, experiencing more water stress. And I guess um, this was the, sorry, the black squares, this was in 2011, we saw this trend. Um, but we did not see the same trend in 2012, which was a wetter year, so we can kind of expect that. Um, so now, if we look at more of a a more of a, a stable soil property, so I'm considering like soil organic carbon, um, which doesn't really change from year to year, whereas the precipitation obviously can change quite a bit. Um, so it's a much more stable soil property, and um, we see the same relationship each year with um, its effect on the, the or the, its relationship with the <coughs> plant available water. So the less soil organic carbon you have in the soil, um, the less plant available water you have as well. And this, this um, soil organic carbon, this also factors in the, uh, the depth of the peat mineral mix as well because it varied between sites. Um, so I just want to note that. So I'm um, just thinking, going back a couple slides, uh, the shoot water potential, that's just, that was one <laughs> measurement in August. And so that indicated that the trees were under some water stress then. But um, I think this, this is um, a bit of a stronger um, argument, too, where uh, you, when you have the lower uh, soil organic carbon, it, it really does um, decrease your plant available water on these sites. And um, with this one, so even looking into type more of a long-term uh, relationship, so this is when we use the five-year height increment, and when I compare this with the organic carbon content of the soil, we see this relationship as well. So over the last five years, um, the trees that had more organic carbon content on those sites 
they, they had more height growth as well. So in conclusion, um, I just want to say that um, the sites that were exhibiting more water stress, they had less soil organic carbon in the peat mineral mix, and this, this seemed to lead to more, or sorry, less plant available water, and um, overall it was less biomass increment and less uh, height growth. And um, these sites with the greater soil organic carbon content in the peat mineral mix, they had a much greater um, five year height increment. And I would just like to thank our funding sources, um, Suncor, Shell, Canadian Natural Resources, and uh, Locane Consultants, they, they um, helped us with the climate data on Pond 1 site, and everyone in our lab for all their advice and help in the field and also in the lab. Thank you.